Improvement in food resources All living organisms require food for their growth and development. The food sources can be obtained from two sources that is plants and animals. Hence we are dependent on both agriculture and animal husbandry for the food resources. As the population is rising, the demand for all resources also has reached to an alarming level. Food demand is also a significant issue. Due to industrialization, the forest cover or the agricultural land is sacrificed. The land for agriculture cannot be enlarged. Therefore, the solution to this crisis is to improve the efficiency of crops, that is, amplified production of increased yields of crops. Like the Green Revolution, which contributed to increased food grain production, also we have the White Revolution, which has led to better and more efficient use as well as availability of milk. Scientific management practices should be undertaken to obtain high yields from farms. Mixed farming, intercropping and integrated farming practices for example combine agriculture with livestock or poultry or fisheries. Improvement in crop yields Different food provides us with different nutrients. Cereals such as wheat, rice, maize provide us with carbohydrate for energy. Pulses like gram, chana, peas, mutter, black gram, urad provide us with protein. Oil seeds including soya bean, mustard, linseed and sunflower provide us with necessary fats. Vegetables, spices and fruits provide a range of vitamins and minerals in addition to small amount of proteins, carbohydrates and fats. In addition to these food crops, fodder crops like bursim, oats are raised as food for the livestock. All plants do not have the same requirements. Climatic conditions, temperature and photo periods play a prominent role in the growth of a plant. Based on this, crops are classified into Kharif crop and Rabi crop. Farming practices involves three major procedures. Choice of seeds for planting, nurturing of crop plants by providing manures and fertilizers and protection of the growing crops from pests and harvested crops from loss. Now let us learn the methods of improving the crop production. These include crop variety improvement, crop production improvement and crop protection management. Crop variety improvement. In order to get better yield, first we need to select the crop variety or strain that is best among the others. By this we mean that the crop variety should be disease resistant, response to fertilizers, product quality and high yields. There are two ways in which improvement in crop production can be done. These are hybridization and introducing a gene. Hybridization is the technique which enables in improving crop production. Let us understand how. Hybridization refers to the process of crossing between genetically dissimilar plants. This crossing may be intervarietal between different varieties, interspecific between two different species of the same genus or intergeneric between different genera. For example, triticale is produced by hybridizing wheat and rye. Introduction of a gene. As we know that the gene is responsible for transmission of characters from the parents to the offspring. The gene specific for a particular character like stress resistant is inserted into another normal crop. This results in genetically modified crops. Crops with improved variety are able to survive in diverse range of conditions. Some of the factors for which variety improvement is done are higher yield to increase the productivity of the crop per acre. Improved quality. Quality considerations of crop products vary from crop to crop. Baking quality is important in wheat, protein quality in pulses, oil quality in oil seeds and preserving quality in fruits and vegetables. Biotic and abiotic resistance. 
crops production can go down due to biotic which are diseases insects and nematodes and abiotic which are drought salinity heat cold and frost stresses under different situations change in maturity duration such short durations allow farmers to grow multiple rounds of crops in a year short duration also reduces the cost of crop production uniform maturity makes the harvesting process easy and reduces losses during harvesting wider adaptability developing varieties for wider adaptability will help in stabilizing the crop production under different environmental conditions desirable agronomic characteristics tallness and profuse branching are desirable characters for fodder crops dwarfness is desired in cereals so that less of nutrients are consumed by these crops crop production management nutrient management farmers purchasing capacity for inputs decides the cropping system and production practices there are various aspects that are considered upon for crop production management these are nutrient management there are 16 essential nutrients that a plant needs for its growth and like us the deficiency of these nutrients may lead to diseases in the plants nine of them are called macronutrients as they are required in the large quantity carbon oxygen are obtained from air while hydrogen from water rest is gained from soil the other seven are needed in trace amounts and hence are called micronutrients click on each of them to study their function to increase the yield the soil can be enriched by supplying these nutrients in the form of manure and fertilizers manures manures are the natural nutrients that are rich in organic matter while the fertilizers are artificially synthesized nutrients which are rich in specific minerals manures are rich in organic matter and are prepared from the decomposition of dead remains of plants and animals the advantages of manures include increasing the water holding capacity which helps in drainage and in avoiding water logging based on the kind of biological material used manure can be classified as compost and vermin compost and green manure the process in which plant and animal waste is decomposed in pits is known as compositing it is rich in organic nutrients green manure prior to growing of the crop seeds some plants like sun hump or gor are grown and then mulched by plowing them into the soil thus these green plants turn into green manure which helps in enriching the soil in nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizers although fertilizers help in enriching the soil with nutrients it also has deleterious effect on the environment the microorganisms are destroyed due to the fertilizers and hence decrease the soil fertility because the organic matter in the soil is not replenished by them the excess fertilizers sometimes get washed away into the water bodies causing water pollution organic farming is a farming system with minimal or no use of chemicals as fertilizers herbicides or pesticides bioagents such as culture of blue green algae are used in preparation of biofertilizers while neem leaves or turmeric are specifically used in the grain storage as biopesticides with healthy cropping systems irrigation due to imbalance in the water cycle the rainfall have become irregular we cannot depend on them for irrigating the crops several different kinds of irrigation systems are adopted to supply water to the agricultural lands depending on the kinds of water resources available these includes wells canals rivers and tanks let us study about them in a dug well the water is collected from water bearing strata while in tube well the water is lifted by pumps from the deeper strata for irrigation in canals we receive water from one or more reservoirs or from rivers the main canal is divided into branch canals having further distributaries 
to irrigate fields. In the river lift system, water is directly drawn from the rivers for supplementing irrigation in areas close to rivers. Cropping Patterns Different cropping patterns improve the crop production and its yield. Mixed cropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land. For example, cotton grown with other crops or oats and pea or groundnut and sunflower. This reduces the risk and gives some insurance against failure of one of the crops. Intercropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same field in a definite pattern. For example, corn and clover, sunflower and maize or finger millet or bajra and cowpea or lobia. The advantage of this cropping pattern is that the crops are selected such that their nutrient requirements are different. This ensures maximum utilization of the nutrients supplied and also prevents pests and diseases from spreading to all the plants belonging to one crop in a field. The growing of different crops on a piece of land in a pre-planned succession is known as crop rotation. The wheat crop is grown initially and then to replenish the nutrient loss gram is grown in the second round on the same field. Crop Protection Management The crops needs to be protected from three major factors weeds, pests and pathogens causing diseases. Let us study about them in detail. Click on each of them to know about them. Weeds As we know that weeds are the unwanted plants and if they are not removed they may compete with main crop plants for nutrients and other resources. For example, Xanthium or Gokru, Cyperneus rotundus or Motha. Pests Generally, insect pests attack the plant in three ways. They cut the root, stem and leaf. They suck the cell sap from various parts of the plant and they bore into stem and fruits. Thus they affect the health of the crop and reduce yields like Colorado potato beetle, buckthorn aphid and white grub. Diseases in plants are caused by pathogens such as bacteria, fungi and viruses. These pathogens can be present in and transmitted through the soil, water and air. For example, tuber infected with potato wart, red hot of sugar cane and late blight of potato. Now to overcome these problems, what should be done? Pesticides, which include herbicides, insecticides and fungicides are added to the soil. These chemicals are sprayed on the crops or used for treating seeds and soil. Weed control methods also include mechanical removal. Preventive methods such as proper seed bed preparation, timely sowing of crops and the use of resistant varieties also help in weed control. After the crops are harvested, systematic management and care should be taken as they may get damaged by pests or inappropriate conditions during storage. These factors causes degradation in quality, loss in weight, poor germinability and discoloration of product. All this lead to poor marketability. Animal Husbandry Animal husbandry is the scientific management of animal livestock. It includes various aspects such as feeding, breeding and disease control. Animal-based farming includes cattle, goat, sheep, poultry, fish farming and beekeeping. How to increase the production of food resources obtained from animals? Let us study about them in the upcoming section. Cattle farming. Cattle husbandry is done basically for two purposes. That is milk and milk products and second draft labor for agricultural work. Indian cattle belong to two different species, Bos indicus cows and Bos bubalis buffaloes. Milch animals are milk producing females while the ones used for farm labor are called draft animals. 
Milk production is dependent on the lactation period. Exotic or foreign breeds, for example, Jersey, Brown Swiss, are selected for long lactation periods. While local breeds, for example, Red Sindhi, Sahiwal, show excellent resistance to diseases. The two can be crossbred to get animals with both the desired qualities. The cattle need adequate food as well as proper care in order to produce milk. The milk requirement includes maintenance requirement, that is, the food required to support the animal to live a healthy life, and milk producing requirement, that is, the type of food required during the lactation period. Roughage, which is largely fiber, and concentrates, which are low in fiber and contain relatively high levels of proteins and other nutrients. Cattle diseases may decrease the milk production and even can cause death. The external parasites cause skin diseases while the internal parasites like worm affect the stomach and intestine while the flukes damage the liver. Animals are vaccinated to protect from pathogens. Poultry farming Poultry farming is undertaken to raise domestic fowl for egg production and chicken meat. The poultry breeds are developed and farmed to produce layers of eggs and broilers for meat. The cross-breeding programs between Indian Asil and cross-breed with foreign leghorn breeds to get desirable triad like number and quality of chicks, dwarf broiler, parent for commercial chick production, summer adaptation capacity, tolerance to high temperature, low maintenance requirements, and reduction in the size of the egg-laying bird. Broiler chickens are fed with vitamin-rich supplementary feed for good growth rate and better feed efficiency. These include maintenance of temperature and hygienic conditions in housing and poultry feed as well as prevention and control of diseases and pests. Fish production Fish is a cheap source of animal protein for our food. Fish production includes the finned true fish as well as shellfish such as prawns and molluscus. It is done by two methods. Capture fishing from natural resources and fish farming which is called culture fishery. Marine fisheries. Popular marine fish varieties include pomfret, mackerel, tuna, sardines and Bombay duck. Marine fish are caught using many kinds of fishing nets from fishing boats. Island fisheries. Fresh water, ponds and reservoirs are the rich sources to obtain fish. Fish culture is sometimes done in the combination with a rice crop so that the fish are grown in the water in the paddy field. Let us understand about the composite fish culture systems. A combination of five or six fish species is used in a single fish pond. These species are selected so that they do not compete for food with each other having different types of food habits. As the cattlers are surface feeders, rohas feed in the middle zone of the pond, mirigals and common carps are bottom feeders and grass carps feed on the weeds. These species can use all the food in the pond without competing with each other. Beekeeping Apiculture is derived from honey bees whose Latin name is Apis mellifera and the meaning honey gatherer. Since bees do not collect honey but nectar from which honey is made, the actual scientific name should be Apis mellifica that means honey maker. In addition to honey, the beehives are a source of wax which is used in various medicinal preparations. Bees collect pollen and nectar. Pollen is the protein source needed for bee brood development while nectar is the carbohydrate source providing energy. The local varieties of bees used for commercial honey production are Apis serena indica, commonly known as the Indian bee, Apis dorsata, the rock bee and Apis flori, the little bee. An Italian bee variety, Apis mellifera, has also been bought in to increase the yield of honey. Advantages of Apis mellifera The Italian bees have high honey collection capacity. They sting somewhat less. 
They stay in a given beehive for long periods and breed very well.